I had the mic all the way over there. Welcome to another reaction video. This time around, I found um, a video called Things to Know Before You Go to Los Angeles, LA Travel Trips. And the thing is that I love California. I love Los Angeles. And I've been there uh, quite a few times. Uh, so I'm curious to see if there is anything I don't know or something I've missed or something I have to do next time I go there or something. Well, uh, let's see. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see what um, what it's all about and what I've missed and what important info there is to know before going. Uh, too late for me, but let's see. In this video, we'll cover all you need to know before traveling to Los Angeles. Like what's the best time to visit, how to get around the city and avoid traffic jams, best apps to use in LA and other practical information. We also made a separate video on top 10 things to do in Los Angeles. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications and share your Los Angeles tips or ask a question in the comments below. With 4 million people, Los Angeles is the largest city in California and the world center of film and television industry. Here are our tips on what to know before traveling to this amazing city. Number 16. Los Angeles Area Los Angeles metropolitan area is the second largest metropolitan area in the US after New York. In practice, it is impossible to tell where Los Angeles starts or ends because most of its neighboring areas just seem like one big city. So let's take a look at the map of Los Angeles and its surroundings so you can get a sense of where the famous attractions are located. Malibu, famous for its beautiful beach and surfing, is located northwest. While still popular with tourists, this is a predominantly residential area with beautiful beach houses. West side includes Santa Monica Pier, the historic end of Route 66, Santa Monica is one of my favorite places. But as far as I remember, recall, Santa Monica is a city of its own. Uh, and it's not part of Los Angeles. It's a part of Los Angeles County, but not Los Angeles City. But please, if I'm wrong, please enlighten me. But as far as I remember, um, all those... Places that pe people think is Los Angeles is actually their own cities, uh, and I, I I think I recall that downtown is what is the central parts of actual Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles. Santa Monica is one city, Malibu is one city, or yeah, but they they're all parts of Los Angeles County, if I remember right. Venice Beach, Beverly Hills, and for example, the Getty Center. Downtown is the central area where most of the high-rises, including the famous US Bank Tower, is located. Hollywood is located to the west and north. Same thing with Los, uh, Hollywood. Hollywood is also a city of its own. Uh, it's part of Los Angeles County, but it's not part of the city of Los Angeles. If I recall it right, but please enlighten me if I'm wrong west of downtown. Here is where you'll find the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the Hollywood sign, followed by San Fernando Valley. And by the way, the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame is so overrated. There's just people who want to sell you crap, maps of maps of the stars and all that type of bullshit. They try to cheat you into buying all types of useless crap. Okay, it is cool to maybe see a... a, a um, a star of uh, one of your uh, idols or whatever. But once you have seen it, there is not much else to do. I mean, it's a tourist trap, that's for sure. They commonly referred to as just the valley, where you'll find Universal Studios. If you drive southeast, there is Long Beach, and if you continue, you and other practical information. We Oops. Um... Let me see if I can find where we were. Areas just seem like is located northwest. Yeah, Long Beach is also um, Long Beach is also a city of its own. Let me I can find it again. Uh, there we have it. Long Beach is also a city because they have their own like uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but they have their um, 
or government or whatever you would call it, like local um, city hall. So uh, that means it's a city of its own, part of Los Angeles County, but Long Beach is a city of its own. Um, at least that's what I think. Orange County, another place known for beautiful beaches and home to Disneyland. Attractions in Los Angeles are spread out just as the city is, so driving... He just said Disneyland is in Orange County. As you hear, it's another county. It's not even part of Los Angeles County. So Disneyland is not even in Los Angeles. Not even Los Angeles County. It's, it's another county. Um, yeah, confusing from one side of LA to another will probably be your daily routine. Number 15. Traffic. Los Angeles is known for its slow traffic. Since the city covers everything from the beaches in the west to East LA and spreads in all other directions, you can travel almost 50 miles and never leave the city. So expect delays everywhere you go. Some roads have tolls, so use Google Maps, Waze or a similar app to check if there are tolls on your route as well as to see your ETA according to the latest traffic situation. The best way to beat the alley traffic during the week is to travel when there is less traffic on the road, like between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m during the day and after 9 p.m. in the evening. Of course, rush hours can stretch either way and there is no guarantees. It is also good to stay away from the I-405. Don't forget to use carpool lanes if you are not traveling alone. Number 14. Safety. Los Angeles has both extremely safe as well as extremely dangerous neighborhoods. There is some pickpocketing but mostly on the subway and places like the Hollywood Walk of Fame, similar with tourist scams, so don't buy your tickets on the streets. Number 13. Weather and Climate Los Angeles has Mediterranean climate, mild to hot and mostly dry all year. The warmest months are from July to September. I mean, it's built in a fucking desert so what would you expect i wonder whoever came up with the idea oh let's build a big city here in the middle of the desert close to the salty sea hmm, what could ever go wrong september and the average temperature in august is 84 degrees fahrenheit however if you're planning to swim in the ocean the water temperature is relatively low even in the summer usually around 68 degrees fahrenheit the weather in spring and fall is dry, the only exception are winter months, which tend to be more wet, especially February. Average high temperature in the winter is around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, with the lows around 48 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Unfortunately, smog is also a very common phenomenon in Los Angeles. Number 12. Best time to travel. The best time to visit Los Angeles is from March to May and between September and November. When there are less crowds, average temperatures range between 70 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and the air is more breathable, which makes visiting Los Angeles great for both outdoor and indoor activities. Number 11. Where to stay? Du har plats 251 i kön. Du har plats 251 Eight commercials. In the middle of this, there is a commercial. Let's lower the sound because I don't want to see this shit. Uh, yeah, but still, where to live? I mean, it all depends on what you want from your trip, I guess. Good budget accommodation in Los Angeles can be tricky. An average three-star hotel costs around $150 per night, but you can get some deals for under $100 per night. When it comes to luxury hotels, Los Angeles offers plenty of options. Since tourist attractions are spread out, there is no ideal place in terms of being close to major sites. So we recommend that you choose an area that you generally like, so you can for example take a walk on the beach if you like the ocean. Some of the best areas to stay are downtown, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, Santa Monica, Venice, Beverly Grove, West Hollywood and Westwood. Watch our video on best steps to book your stay and find your best accommodation in Los Angeles and check the description for more information. Number 10. Transportation From and to the airport 
The main airport in Los Angeles is LAX, located 18 miles southwest of downtown Los Angeles. There are several options to travel from and to LAX, including renting a car, an airport flyaway bus, a shuttle service that provides non-stop transportation between LAX and designated bus stops in five LA neighborhoods, Uber or Lyft, shared ride shuttles and taxis. If you plan on renting a car, it's wise to do so in advance as you can get much better deals this way. Getting around the city, Los Angeles is spread out and public transportation is not as efficient and organized as in other cities such as New York or San Francisco. So check if your destination is covered by public transportation by using apps like Google Maps where you can easily see public transportation options and how much time it takes to arrive at your... I don't know if he's gonna mention it, but when I'm in LA, I use Uber a lot. Uber works very, very well in Los Angeles. And if you go from downtown to Santa Monica and similar, I use the, the train um, or the subway or whatever, metro or whatever you would call it. It's, it's, pr it's pretty new. Uh, I think it could be like five, six, seven years old, but it works very well. It takes you directly to where you want to go. No traffic jams. Your destination. Some areas are still well covered by either metro trains or buses. If you want to use public transportation, you can use a reusable tap cart available from tap vending machines at metro stations with a $1 surcharge. The cart allows you to add a preset cash value or day passes. The regular base fare is $1.75 per boarding or $7 for a day pass with unlimited rides. A more convenient method of transportation for tourists in Los Angeles are car rentals or Ubers and Lyfts. You can also rent a car per hour, for instance, with the Zipcar. Check the description for more information. Number 9. Best apps to use in LA Your smartphone can be your best buddy in Los Angeles. Here are some of the best apps to use. Google Maps, Waze, Apple Maps or any other app with current traffic and public transportation information. And as mentioned, Uber and Lyft if you prefer a ride. Park me, best parking. And make sure you have a good roaming deal on your uh, internet subscriber because otherwise it will be very expensive for you using uh, all that uh, mobile data when you're in Los Angeles. So just a little remark on that. Or park with if you're looking for best and most affordable parking. Gas Buddy if you want to find cheapest gas prices since gas in California is expensive compared to other US states. LA Weekly, a resource to discover events, restaurants and activities in the city. 5 every day, which suggests 5 interesting things to do in LA every day. Airbnb, where you can book experiences and tours with locals. Eat with, where you can book a dinner or a cooking class at someone's home. Lime or Bird, where you can rent an electric scooter and explore the city this way. Number 8. Lines are everywhere. Since Los Angeles is usually a crowded place, you can expect lines not only on the road but also at the restaurants and all major attractions. Number 7. Food Food in Los Angeles is not the cheapest, but it is known for its quality and diversity. If you visit Grand Central Market in downtown LA, you can experience fresh food from all over the world. That place is also something I want to recommend. It's awesome and you have food different types of food all over the place it's not super expensive but you can find almost anything here and i have to also agree on the food it's very diverse and you can find some of the best mexican food um i have ever tasted that i found that in downtown la all in one place. An average meal at an inexpensive restaurant costs approximately $14 and a mid-range three-course meal for two costs about $55. You can find less expensive options with a little research on Yelp or TripAdvisor. Check the description for links to ideas for best cheap. Another hint here, if you uh, stay at a hotel, especially in downtown, Avoid breakfast at the hotel. If it's not including it in the price, do not pay for it. Go outside, find another breakfast restaurant just around. They're like everywhere. Because the, the cost for a single breakfast could be up to 50 bucks for us breakfast. And for 50 bucks, you get a breakfast for like five people. Like 
almost every other place. So make sure you check that before you uh, are having breakfast at your hotel. Make sure it's included, and if it's not, find another place for your breakfast. That's just friendly advice. It's number six for tourists coming from outside the US. If you're not from the United States, and especially if you're arriving directly to Los Angeles, there are a couple of things to know. Tipping. You should always tip in bars and restaurants in the United States, and therefore Los Angeles. The normal rate is between 15 and 20% pre-tax for restaurants. One the only exception there is when you buy uh, at McDonald's, Burger King, or any of the usual ones. Um, you don't have to pay any uh, uh, tips there. Uh, and most of the restaurants nowadays, you d you don't have to do the calculation yourself. They have like in in the in their paying systems, you can just push a button and choose the percentage you want to pay as a tip. So it's it's pretty easy. But make sure make sure you give tips and do not forget it because the waiters and stuff that that's sometimes that's all they get. So uh, I mean here in Sweden. The tip is usually a part of what you pay for your dishes and stuff. And if you want to add anything extra on top of it, it's just if you have them some extraordinary service or whatever. But in the U.S., it's more or less mandatory to do it because, well, you that's the payment they get, more or less. $1 to $2 per drink for bartenders or 15 to 20% off the bar tab. You should know that servers in the US are usually paid minimum wage or less and rely heavily on tips. Power plugs. There's a chance you will need a special US power adapter to charge your phone and other devices. This is what the US power plug looks like. We recommend purchasing a power adapter before traveling to Los Angeles. In fact, it's worth buying the adapter for the entire world so you can use it in other countries too. Number five, drinking water. Despite the public perception that the tap water is not fit for drinking, the Los Angeles Department of Water ensures that their tap water is as clean as bottled water. It might not taste as good as bottled water, but it may save you some money. Number four. No, I would not recommend to drink the tap water in Los Angeles. It, it tastes like chlorine. It tastes like when you get those sips of water from the swimming pool. It's disgusting. Um, so no, that's a no-go for me. Or discounts and coupons. There are many things you can do in Los Angeles, from shows, stand-ups to sport events, whale watching and many more. It is worth searching on Groupon, Living Social and other similar coupon sites for money-saving deals. Check the description for the links. Number 3. Save on attractions. Some of the famous attractions in Los Angeles are very expensive. For example, a daily ticket to the Universal Studios is around $100. If you want to visit more attractions, we recommend buying a Go Los Angeles card to visit multiple LA attractions for a reduced price. Or buy a so-called City Pass if you want to visit several amusement parks in Los Angeles, Orange County and San Diego and want to save some money. Amusement parks include Universal Studios, Disneyland, SeaWorld San Diego, Legoland and others. Check the description for links. On the other hand, there are some great attractions in Los Angeles that are completely free and you only have to pay for parking, for example, the Getty Museum or Griffith Observatory. Griffith Observatory is amazing. Um, I would definitely recommend it, no matter what you're into. It's an amazing place. The view you have from here, especially at nighttime, is unbeatable. And I was also recommend to go into uh, the observatory and see what they're doing. And they're, they have some really nice exhibitions and if you're lucky, you get um, some sort of presentations as well. And it's well worth a visit. Observatory. Number two, Wi-Fi. Especially if you're an international traveler, access to free Wi-Fi is very important. You'll find free Wi-Fi in many places in and around Los Angeles. Download Wi-Fi Finder, an app that downloads Wi-Fi maps so you can search for nearby Wi-Fi even when you're offline, or use Wyman that helps you find all the free Wi-Fi hotspots available in your travel destination. You can also buy a local SIM card and get online that way. 
Some of the best providers for cheap SIM cards when it comes to value for money are prepaid cards from T-Mobile and Mint. Check the description for more suggestions and links. Number 1. Best Views of the City For the best and amazing free views of Los Angeles, you can visit Griffith Observatory, Hollywood Sign, Echo Park, Baldwin Hills Scenic Overlook, Mount Wilson Observatory, City Hall, Getty Center, etc. But you can also pay and see the city from another perspective from OUE SkySpace LA, the tallest observation deck in California, and right on their skyslide stretching directly above downtown Los Angeles. Do you have a suggestion on what you need to know before traveling to Los Angeles? What's your experience? Do you have a question about LA? Share it in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that we can keep bringing you more awesome content. Yeah, I really do miss uh, Los Angeles when I saw this video. I miss California. Um, I've always got well, well, I I always go there in in June usually for work, but it is hot as fuck. So I would like to go there during one of the periods he he suggested in the video. But I can't wait to go back. It's an amazing place. I love it. So until the next time, see you around. Thanks for watching. Bye.